As Sandy's floodwaters recede and relief efforts get underway, personal stories of tragedy, loss, and heroism are emerging. We took a trip out to Queens on Tuesday, running into downed trees and debris all along the way to visit a community that is once again facing enormous loss. It is an indelible image of Sandy's destruction. In breezy Point, some said whatever wasn't flooded was on fire. In the end, more than 100 homes destroyed. We got each other, we got our families. Yep. And just down the coast, the same devastation. Here in Rockaway Beach, it was also a combination of the storm and fire. Flames broke out here at the height of Sandy, and because the water was so deep here, Firefighters simply couldn't get in to put them out, so the wind whipped the flames from building to building, home to home. This was the Harbor Light Pub, very well known in this area. One of the reasons the owner of that restaurant lost his son during the attacks of 9-11. And when I got out of the car here a short time ago, I had an immediate and eerie sense of deja vu. The reason is this. Back on November 12, 2001, American Airlines Flight 587 took off from John F. Kennedy Airport. A short distance from here, it wasn't airborne very long, and it came straight down, nose first. It crashed where that gray house is right now. 260 people on board died. I anchored the show from here the next morning. I'm Matt Lauer in Bell Harbor, Queens, where Flight 587 crashed about 22 hours ago into a group of houses about a block and a half behind me. The destruction devastating. It's a neighborhood that's been asked to bear more than it should have to. Rockaway lost 59 people on 9-11. Flight 587 crashed here soon after. And now, almost every block, homes destroyed. And along with them, a lifetime of memories. Linda Humphrey grew up here. Talk to me about this neighborhood a little bit. This neighborhood, you can't say enough about this neighborhood. We've been through a lot with, you know, 9-11 and planes crashing and... We all pull together. It's unbelievable the, you know, the neighborhood feel you get in, in Rockaway Beach and Bell Harbor here. These are pictures Linda took of Sandy battering her neighborhood. She says she decided to stick it out despite a mandatory evacuation, thinking last year's Hurricane Irene wasn't so bad. So did many of her neighbors. The owners of this house barely survived. They fled their home at 6 o'clock Monday night. It broke apart soon after. Neighbor Y. David Sharp finds himself searching for priceless keepsakes of the place where he learned to ride a bike. Uh, I grew up here. Um, this is my child at home, basically, and uh, it, it's basically gone. It's got it through the water, ripped through here last night and this morning, and uh, utter devastation. Your, your parents still live here? My parents still live here. Uh, was they uh, got to other high ground in, in Brooklyn and are safe, safely there, and we're trying to salvage the remnants of uh, what's left of the home. What would you like to find for your parents' sake? Uh, I'd like to find some photographs. I'd like to find for my children's sake, my childhood photographs. Uh, I'd like to find some things from my grandparents that my parents had here. These are real treasures. And hopefully we find them. Chief James McNally says his firefighters fought hard to save this neighborhood. Have you ever seen anything like that before where you simply couldn't get in to where the buildings were on fire? Years, 30 years on a fire department. I've been in snowstorms, other hurricanes. Units were not able to get into Rockaway last night. No units got in here for close to two hours. What, what, what is that like for guys who are trained? It's their lives to go in and put fires out, and uh, they I'm can sure get I'm sure it was close. frustrating because units were staged on high ground right across the bridge, and they were able to see the fires, and a lot of them have family and friends over here. And what happened was, you know what, they just couldn't come here. You can't drive a fire, fire truck through five to seven feet of water. They eventually had to wait for the water surge to recede a little bit, and then they were able to get units down here. By then, it was, you can see it right here, catastrophic. Back to that Harbor Light pub that burned down on the corner where so much has happened. It was owned by Bernie Heeren, who tragically lost his son on 9-11. He spoke to us after the crash of Flight 587. Everybody, it wasn't an I day, it was a we day and an everybody day. There are there's so many people in this neighborhood that are off our firemen, and PD, civilians, everybody help. This community will be together forever. His words spoken in a different time, echoing and being tested today in a neighborhood that has answered the call before. 
really was an extraordinary trip out there. And, and all the people who had come up to me on the street kept saying, I wonder if the people at FEMA know how much we need them now. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they have no communication. They have no electricity. Their cell phones don't work. They don't know that people out there know about their struggles. It's astonishing to see and to hear how many of them talk about that close-knit community. But mm -hmm. as you said, how much can one community be asked to bear?